Um, so, my name is Juraj Kubelka. Um, I'm originally from Czech Republic and last five years I lived in Santiago, in Chile. And I work with the Pink company, the, with the team to reshape the developer experience. And in this talk, in the next couple of minutes, I will show you one of our tools, which is called Documenter, to document uh, <coughs> source code software, and we have also other tools, basically, which I will show you after. So, so what is a Documenter? Documenter has two is for making made for creating and consuming a documentation. And the first use case is about software. So it's also for developers to write software and for the readers who want to learn about the software to, to use it for them to read it and to play with it. Because the document is not just about reading, it's about playing. So I will show you. And so in the first use in the first use case, can you hear me like this? Okay. <coughs> it's about the software, uh, recommending the software. So what's the common practice uh, to document the software? Is the writing blogs or tutorials on the web or books, which can be electronic or printed. Yeah, here is a screenshot of a book made for Faro. And you can see that the common thing about when, when we document software is uh, that we introduce the topic or the issue and then it starts to uh, collection of snippets or, or class definitions, method definitions that a reader should write uh, in, in a system and observe some results or compare the results. Well, with the documentary we can do it much better, where very similar results as reading book, uh, you can have directly in the ID, in, in this case in the file, where we have some introduction text and right below we have an example. The example is a method which uh, terminates a talk uh, where you explain details. Uh, what are benefits of it, and it's composed of the source code, source code uh, which is executed, and also the live uh, result of, of, the, of, the, of execution of such method. I can, in that case, it's a button, uh, and I can click on it, and I can see some uh, some response on it, and also. As, as we can see and read the source code right here, <coughs> I can go in the methods which are called from here, which is another example. And I can read it and I can, for example, be interested uh, to change something. So let's say that I will change the color and I will apply it and I will execute it. Well, there is a small screen. So I have to scroll down, and you can see that there is an inspector of, of this small snippet I just executed, changed and executed. And I can execute also the whole example and see the impact of, of my change. So I don't, I don't have to leave the documentation when I'm reading it. If I'm interested, what, what's happened if I change this or if I change the other things? I can change it directly in the documentation, and I can play with it. I don't have to leave uh, the place. Uh, I am. Okay, so this example actually uh, is a file on my disk, which there is, you can see the file reference on the top. But you can have the same experience uh, inside of the system, inside the file, as a class comment. So you can see very same example documentation of, of buttons, how to create buttons in block. And you can see the same source code, you can see uh, the uh, results. Actually, you, can, you see that there is a red color and that's changed. And you can also, uh, that way, you can read the other options how to build buttons. There are many of them. I will show just one more. 
another way. So this is the way uh, to explore uh, software if you are interested about it. So I just repeat. So this is the first use case how to really uh, consume documentation. Later I will show how to write such a documentation to see that it's really easy to write. Um, so uh, any questions about the part? Okay. So what, what, what happens if you in your snippet let's say you break something? What happens in the uh, if I break something, uh, uh, let's say I will put something that doesn't exist. You can see uh, a message and you can debug it. Yeah? Can you can debug it right there. Yeah, you can debug it. Currently, uh, it's almost. Currently, it's a new window, but we are on the way to integrate it. Yeah, so this is. Uh, this is how it works. M most of the system or uh, uh, it is try to to have this button, but uh, debug button. And if you want to debug it, you, you debug it. If not, you just ignore it. And okay. So another question. Um, what what are those things uh, behind these things? Uh, uh, can you the, read uh, here? the blue ones on your on the left? Okay, I mean, yes. the left part. On the left side. Uh, those ones? Yeah. 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 Ah, okay. Are there prices to different documentation? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, the documenter works like a wiki. So, in the Wikipedia, you have links, but in that case, you, know, you stay in the same base page with people, new pages next to each other. And yeah, there are several ways, several kinds of links. This is link, which if you read here, it's input file, so it refers to an external file on the disk. Yeah. Here is the, you can see that it's different, it's called class, and it's actually link to class, and a class in Faro is an object which has an inspector. So you can see the comment definition method. And the comment is the documenter. So when you inspect any class in Faro uh, um, and you, you select the comment tab, you see the documenter. And maybe there are other links. So those blue things usually mean things somewhere. <coughs> okay. So the, the next use case is for the teaching software. There is there is a difference from from the previous um, example. That let's say here is a tutorial uh, about how to break examples. Uh, and as the first step after reading the English the introduction, the reader is asked to write a class which is the class definition here, and also write, write the method definition, which starts here. Yeah, and so this is what we should do if he or she can uh, want to follow the tutorial. The benefits from comparing to, to that, like printed documentation is that the user can see the difference to the system, and he or she can also apply it. It's not necessary to copy paste it from Google or write it. So if I apply it, uh, you know, the if tab disappears because there are no changes. And that way I can follow the documentation, the tutorial. And actually, in that tutorial, we just created the class and we created also a method definition, which is called create part in memory. And which is an example, actually. And here we can see that we see that immediately the example we just created. And the same thing that I created, I can play with it and I can change it as I did it just before. And I can follow. So this is like this is the second step of the tutorial. I can follow this 
And that way I could follow until the end of, of the tutorial. Actually, at the end of the tutorial, we have also uh, we, we execute those examples and we see that they are going on right? the same way as we do, we do with the test cases. Uh, okay, so this was the second use case I wanted to show you. Is there any question about it? About the chip? Yeah. So you said this was a File that was on your system. Yeah. And so it's documenting some methods. And what happens if you, your code is referencing objects you don't have in your system? The code, yeah, it's actually happened just here. Um, So this is this is the um, class I just created. So I will remove it, and uh, I think it will answer your question. And and you can you can see, for example, this example uh, reference to something that doesn't exist yet. So it just says that the example doesn't exist yet. So similarly, um, this link is like red. Because the, the color views and some reference doesn't exist. So, yeah, this is, is it the answer? Okay. Okay, any question to that part about teaching software? Thanks. And, okay, so the third use case, third use case. So, here, if you want to create a method, you have to write, you, you have to create a method. You have to write that uh, sentence, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there is a definition. Yes? And no, but if you want to, to create from out of nothing, like a new method, you know? How do you create it? Ah, uh, how do I create How is it tutorial again? Is that important? Is it working? Ah, it's working? Okay. So the question is, how do you create a, a new method or a new class? Uh, yeah. you, can, you can create, uh, you mean for the tutorial? Oh. Yeah. Uh, then I will show this in, in the oh, last okay. time, uh, how to author this tutorial. I will show this one. Yeah. <laughs> so I have one more use case for uh, let's say for consuming, and then the, the last step is that I will show up to write the documentation. Okay, so the third use case we have in mind is for data scientists, for data science. Mm -hmm. We think that the software development and data science are nearly the same job, like they, both of them uh, manipulate data and be uh, if you find out that source, source code is a data, then we do the same job. This uh, talk from yesterday and so the tutorial uh, we did on Tuesday, try to uh, elaborate more on, on, on this. Okay, so let's say, what, what do data scientists uh, with the data? Uh, how do they work? The first, uh, they need to retrieve data, right? They download it from somewhere or they... It can be a log, it can be something from the internet. Uh, here I have a... Um, here, let's say, in, in this example, I want to uh, do some analysis of, of this screenshot, uh, of this picture. Yeah, this is a phase uh, 
analysis. So yeah, I, in the first step, I just let, uh, somehow load it to my image the data I want to analyze. Okay, this is what I just did. And in the, the second step, the, the data scientist do is to analyze the data to process that. You know, uh, let's let's say that in this example, I I, I want to detect the faces. So you can use a library for which does this, or there is external services that does this. Uh, I already downloaded the data from I don't know this. I think it's from Microsoft who does this uh, face time detection, and I I have it in my image right now. Uh, if you if you read and inspect uh, the raw data I just received, is a array of dictionary of dictionaries, so it's not really something I want to really read. Yeah, so. What, what the researchers do with such data? They do some visualization, so some charts, some something that some queries to to, to make a mini, meaningful observation uh, that is possible to read. So we created some classes to facilitate this, and here I can have some visualization of of the data. That are meaningful to me. It looks like that this is I, this is another I, and this is what we have in the field. <laughs> and it looks like this. But let's say that I want to be sure that where it fits to, to the picture I, I have been uh, about. So I can do another step. And I can join this data together. And I can see how oh, it's really uh, I. Uh, that, that really means eyes. And this is really what data scientists do. You, know, you may already saw Jupiter, which is made for, for writing the script, see results, writing the analysis script results. We, here, we do much better because uh, we are in library environment, we can, we can display what we really want to display. And we can, Continue. If I'm interested in, in this object, which is called by face, and I can do more on it, I just, I just follow. Now, Jupiter and those notebooks, they, they stop here. They, they see something, but you can't really play with this. It's huge difference. Okay, so this is the third use case about. Uh, how we, uh, how documenter can be used. So the first was the documenting software or the consuming documentation of software, the, the teaching software, and the data science. Is any question about about this third part or any other related okay, If not, uh, I'm going to show how to write the documentation. Okay, so here I have an external file, okay, which is actually the same examples as we saw. And I just removed the parts uh, with, the, with the source code, with the examples, and um, I just keep the text which we don't want to read over here. So, how, how can I create the, the snippet with changes that the uh, reader should do? Uh, we use a uh, do not pillar, or have you heard about it? So it's markdown. Uh, yeah. So we use a markdown language called pillar, and it has this uh, use these characters to for annotation, and we have an annotation called changes, which, as you can see, uh, we have deeply integrated computer whenever it's possible. And, and the changes needs the file name, so I will just write it. And, and now we have uh, the place uh, where the changes are displayed. It's empty because the file doesn't exist. So I can edit it. So 
there is a button and the way to create new methods is just do it in the tool if you want to do it uh, it is like in, in the system browser and in those models you don't have a change list at, at least in Faro there is a change list and I can create the changes I'm interested in. So let's say that I want to create, I want to add to this tutorial the definition of the class and definition of, of that method. So I just create it and you may notice that the change is already applied here, published here. There is a list of, like a list of all the changes that should be done in that step. So is it okay? <coughs> so this is what I just did and uh, yes, I've been uh, my, the class before, I don't have it, so they are still deep. So let's say that I will apply it again. And the next step, uh, remember, was displaying that great part in memory example. So I can, how can I do this? A uh, similar way, let me use annotation of the lab, uh, which is for example. And this is a parameter, I will put the class and my code name. And you can see that the completer works nicely, it helps me to fill it, the data. And once I finish the annotation with the similar symbol at the beginning, I see the result. Uh, you can see the, the, the definition of the, the pragma example and some body, and I can I can see I can observe the results. So I inspect the result. But I, so I, let's say that I'm not satisfied with, with this definition because, uh, as was mentioned yesterday, the examples should include assertions. It's like test. So let's say that I will change it a bit without leaving documentation. I will just crush it. And I think that the file should exist when I finish. And the difference are that the, the main feature of the example that they should return is the object of interest to the file. So I will apply the changes. I can execute it. Here I see that it's successful because the file really exists. And I can again see the content. And let's say that I want these changes to be to applied here, going back to the first step. So I will again edit. I will remove this, uh, this definition. And I will add the new one, which is great, which is the, the last uh, change in my image is, is always on top. So, so then I, I have it here. You can see the asset. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. So, you just saw that uh, I can edit even the source code in some extent inside the documentation that I don't really need to switch between windows and you know, move it around. I can, whenever it's visible here, I can really edit it just in place. And well, we have several options to display the example which I am uh, going to show you right now. So I will. Display the same example as, as above. And now we have really the same one. And you can see the first thing that uh, to see the results, I have to click on this. But let's say that in some use case, in some cases, In some cases, 
uh, I want to make it by default that the reader read it because it's always something that the, uh, the reader wants to see. So there's the option. It's only preview now. Once I have it, it's always here to change uh, the, the result. Mm. Another thing that we can also change is let's say that I, I don't want to display the whole inspector because this is embedded inspector inside the documentation which displays everything including the methods of objects object. Let's say that I want to show him just that stuff, this content. So we can do it too. And by adding another parameter which is called short and and the parameter uh, the, the value of the parameter is a method definition and if I'm right you can see that it's very simplified just a subset of the inspector displaying the content. So if I, if I change, for example, here and apply it, and it's changed. Okay? And Yeah, I think uh, yeah, okay. The, the last thing I, I would like to show you is, for example, uh, that you don't want to display the source code because it's something something interesting to read during the tutorial. So one another parameter I would like to show you is the not code. So if I add this, you can see the comparing to the previous uh, annotation that here uh, the reader just see the results and just part of it comparing to the default value uh, where the reader see the source code and the code inspector so you can really uh, make the custom views of each example ok I think I am done and there are a few minutes for questions For the question, the, the toolkit, just to remind you, uh, you can download the image here for the question. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the, the, the feature of um, What's the, the, the future of this? What's the next step? Well, uh, <coughs> this is a good question because the thing has one property, and that is that we don't have a roadmap, and <laughs> and we, it still works. You know, we develop something in a couple of months or a couple of weeks. Um, well, but to say something concrete, uh, we announced yesterday alpha version two, so it means we have to st stabilize it to get to the final version. So this is our main goal. Uh, I can't really say like the details that we have button here or there. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know if you had to make uh, extensions to the pillar. Okay, 
Okay, so we use 100% filler format. There is no extra mm -hmm. character that is not. What's what? Uh, like those. Uh, do you know what this annotation is? Yeah. Okay, so those annotations are. Uh, if you write a new one, it's mm -hmm. creating new class. And if you don't have it, uh, the pillar like the, the doesn't know what to do with this. Okay. So you you need the class which uh, okay. defines the example. But this is the subclassing of annotation. Okay. The pillar format space mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Last question because that should be. Um, on, on all the examples you showed, um, the things that you described already exist, right? Yes. Can, can we describe something that doesn't exist? Um, yeah. And do you mean software? Is there any software that doesn't exist? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, if you want to do an experiment, so, um, try to, for example, um, create a method to write something, or you are creating something and you want to write text, and after that, write code, um, in an easy way. Okay. Um, well, uh, does it make sense to use the tool with this purpose? Well, if I understand, you are talking about writing tutorial, right? like with applying the uh, is this that kind of uh, like uh, like writing the tutorial, right? Uh, okay. So at, at this moment, uh, that's what you're saying is, can I can I use this tool in order to write a method, a new method, I create a whole new method uh, in a in a class that either exists or maybe doesn't exist, and then then I create an example for that one, to so test it, and so on, right? And the question is, does it make sense to necessarily create it here? At this very moment in time, that specific use case is it uh, supported? Because we don't think that's necessarily the best place to do it. It can be, but it's just at this moment, it's not implemented. But then it is still possible to write code. That doesn't mean it's not possible to write code. So you saw the snippets, and you can start exercising completely new code, like it would be in a playground. Uh, so that's the current stage. But uh, you will be able to create new methods. And that's just a matter of time. Okay, so thank you.